Why shouldn't Christians accept millions of years? Today, most Christians seem to accept that idea, and they have for the last 200 years. But there are a number of reasons why we shouldn't. First of all, the evidence in Genesis 1 is that the days of creation were literal. God defined a day uh, in verse 5. He used uh, numbers, first day, second day, third day. We also get an idea of how long ago these days were in Genesis 5 and 11, where we have the genealogies from Adam to Noah and Noah to Abraham. And so those tell us how long ago the creation was. A second reason is Exodus 20, verse 11. God gives the commandment to the Israelites to work six days and rest on the seventh because he created in six days the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. We can't have any creation before the six days, and God uses the same word for days in both parts of the commandment, showing that God created in six literal days. The third reason we should ex reject the millions of years is because of Noah's flood. Noah's flood literally washes away those millions of years because that millions of years idea came from supposedly the geological record. But it came as a result of, of geologists in the early 19th century rejecting the biblical account of the flood and then using anti-biblical assumptions to interpret the rocks and the fossils. But Noah's flood is described in Genesis as a global catastrophe, so it would have produced exactly the kind of geological record we see today of, of thousands of feet of sedimentary rocks and fossils buried in them. A fourth reason is Jesus' view. Jesus always took the Old Testament uh, accounts in Genesis as literal history. And in Mark chapter 10, verse 6, Jesus is responding to a question by the Pharisees about divorce, and he says, from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. He then quotes from Genesis 1 and 2. So Jesus is saying that Adam and Eve were right back there at the beginning of creation, not billions of years after the beginning, as the evolutionists would want us to believe. A fifth reason we should reject the millions of years idea is because of the Bible's teaching about death. The Bible says in Genesis 1 that God created a perfect creation. It was very good. People and animals ate plants. They didn't eat animals. And then God cursed the creation, bringing death into the creation. And so Paul says in Romans 8 that the whole creation is now in bondage to corruption. A sixth reason is because science has not proven millions of years. See, the millions of years doesn't come from the rocks and the fossils. It comes from the interpretation of those things. And those interpretations are based on anti-biblical assumptions that dominate the scientific community today. So the rocks don't say millions of years. It is the interpretation. And finally, uh, we should reject this because the radiometric dating methods are not foolproof methods for giving us the age of rocks. Those methods are based on anti-biblical assumptions, again, and there is good reason uh, to believe scientifically that those assumptions are false. So ultimately, the real battle here is not between science and religion, it's a battle over authority. Will we believe the Word of God, who was there at the beginning, who knows everything, who always tells the truth, who never lies, and who gave us an inspired account so that we would have the truth about where this world came from, why it is the way it is, and where it's going? Or will we believe the fallible opinions of sinful men called scientists who don't know everything, who make mistakes, and who are trying to explain the world without God so they do not have to be morally accountable to Him? It's an issue of authority, and we need to believe God's Word.